Here we're going to be going through an example here where we're going to be looking at the lower of cost or market inventory costing. And we're going to be concentrating here on calculating the ceiling and floor limits and also the inventory values. So our problem is going to be here where we've got a per unit cost basis. We're going to be looking at it on a per unit cost basis here. And we're going to be looking at an again on an individual item basis here where we have these items here and then we're going to be given a certain quantity for these items and in a cost per unit here. Now this is the uh, original cost here and then we're going to be giving the cost replacement cost on these units and then the selling price here and the cost to complete these units here and also a normal profit margin uh, on a per unit basis here. So the first thing we have to do here for this problem is we have to calculate our ceiling and floor limits here. Now these lim ceiling and floor limits they prevent over or undervaluing our inventories. And based on our example here, uh, the way we go and calculate these here, the ceiling limit represents our net realizable value here on these inventories, and the floor here represents the net realizable value here less any a normal profit margin here. So let's first look at this net realizable value in terms of our problem uh, we have here. Uh, this is would be calculated here where we take the selling price, that's the sales value here. We can go up here and look at it. That's our selling price on a per unit basis here. And then we have to subtract out the cost to complete or dispose of these items here. And that we have shown up here on a per unit basis. So subtracting this, uh, taking our selling price here, uh, and subtracting the cost to complete and dispose of each of these items here, we come up with the what we call the net realizable value for each of these items A, B, C, and D here. And then uh, to the next thing here for our floor value here, that's the net realizable value less a normal profit margin. So uh, we have to subtract out this profit margin here from the net realizable value. And uh, we can go up here and we can look at that. That normal profit margin on a per unit basis is shown here. So we subtract that uh, profit margin on each of these items here from the net realizable value. And that gives us our net realizable value here, less the normal profit margin here. So that's our floor limit here. Now, let's go down here and do our calculation here to determine our ending inventory value here. So we're, again, we have to lay out this problem here where again we list our items here and then we've got our cost here. Now that's the original cost that we're talking about here for each of those items. And then the replacement cost that's shown here, that we were given here along with our cost, we were given that as well. Now this net realizable value here, that's the ceiling amount here. Remember we went up there and we calculated that up here, this net realizable value up here and then the net realizable value less than a profit margin that's our floor value here and that we calculated up here as well. Now what we have to do here when we use this lower cost the market method the first thing we have to do is we have to determine our designated market value here. Let's go down and look at that again here. The designated market value is the amount compared to the cost here and it's always the middle value of the three amounts here the replacement cost the net real realizable value or three the net realizable uh, uh, value here less than normal profit margin. So we're looking for a middle value here. So let's look at item A here for example and again we have to start here with this determine our designated market value here and we're going to be uh, be looking at our replacement cost here the net realizable ceiling and then the net realizable um, less this profit margin our floor amount here and we have to take the middle value of these three amounts. So you can see right here our high value here uh, for item A was eight dollars and thirty cents here that, that was a ceiling and then our uh, low value here is 580 here and that was the minimum or the lower the lowest of the value so our middle value here is the replacement cost that's uh, that six dollars here that's between the high limit here of, of 830 and the low amount here of 580 so that becomes our designated uh, value here market value we call that the market value here for a that was our market value here and then we can go through items B C and D in the same fashion here you can see for item B here 
the middle value here is, uh, is the floor amount here of four dollars and eighty cents since the um, high value here the ceiling uh, was 580 and the low value was 460 so our middle amount here is 480 so that becomes our desig our market value here for item B and then for item C the same thing we can look at here uh, 920 high 720 low so the middle value here was our replacement cost here at 740 so that's what we assign as our market value now let's look at item uh, D here again uh, 9 was the low 11 is the high so the replacement cost 1040 is the middle amount that's what we assign here to our designated market value is what we're looking at now we have to, now this is where we come in to determine our lower cost or market here that's the second thing we have to do now this lower cost or market that is the lower amount here between the cost and our market amount here so let's look at it we've determined what our market amount here we call it the designated market value here and what we have to do is we have to compare that here to the cost that's the original cost that we have in each one of these items so what we have to do here is take the lower of those two amounts so does for item a here six dollars here is lower than the cost of 640 so that's what we would assign here to our lower cost of market here uh, our LCM here six dollars and then for uh, the item B here again the between the cost here uh, 540 and the uh, four dollars and or the four dollars and eighty cents here the designated market value here we would come up with our lower cost here of four dollars and eighty cents and then for the uh, item C here you can see here we've got um, designated market value here of 740 and the cost of nine dollars so the lower amount here is our market value at 740 here and then let's look at item D here now our market value here is at 1040 and our cost here is at 940 so our cost is lower in this case so that's what we would assign here to our lower cost of market that nine forty dollar nine dollars and forty cents here so the next thing just to determine our final inventory we've remember we've done this on a per unit basis so when you approach these problems you can do it on a per unit basis here but we're and then we're going to take this lower in this case we'll to determine our final inventory value here we'll just take the a lower cost here on a per unit basis that we, we determined here times our quantity that gives us our final inventory amount so six dollars here times quantity of twelve hundred gives us seventy two hundred dollars so we just proceed on here through all our items here and uh, the lower cost here lower cost or market market value here times our quantity gives us our final inventory value so we just sum all of these up here and we come up with our final inventory value of twenty six thousand eight hundred and forty dollars in this case so just to uh, go through what we've done here the first thing we have to do here is we have to come up with this designated market value and that was simply the middle amount just remember the middle amount between this replacement cost our ceiling amount here and our floor amount so whatever the middle amount is we have to determine what a high um, value is our low value and then just take the middle value and that becomes our designated market value now next thing we uh, just to review here this market our, we to determine our lower cost or market well we just take out our market value versus our cost over here in whatever the lower value is that becomes our lower cost or market amount here and then from that in this case we just took it times our quantity that we're holding here in inventory and that gave us our final inventory amount so this is just a typical problem here and how you would have to in this case we had to determine what our ceiling amount amount here was and then what our floor amount and then we were given the other thing other item prices here.